Hey, rich friends, it's your girl Cha Cha reporting live from the Money Mantra, and we're back with another Forex education video. The purpose of this channel is to help as many people as possible become independent and profitable traders. So, if that's something that you are looking for, make sure that you do subscribe. If you get to the end of this video and it's helpful, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment to let me know what you learned, but more importantly, share this video with another trader. If you need more assistance, you do have the option to register for personal mentorship or follow me on TradingView, and those links are down below in the description box. Um, so today is going to be a really thorough Forex class. I can't really say if it's for beginner or advanced, but um, if you just want a deeper understanding of what's actually going on in the Forex market and things that you should be looking for, then this is going to be the perfect video to watch. Um, so I'm going to go through all of the steps that I've learned um, and the steps that I've gone through uh, in my most profitable trades. I mean, what you'll notice is that you, you've been doing some of these things um, or maybe you've been doing none of these things. But if you start to really put all the pieces together, uh, everything will just it'll just come together and it'll just make more sense. So when you skip a step, it may seem minor, right? It may seem like something so small like oh I didn't have this one particular confirmation or oh I just forgot to check the news today but then the trade doesn't go in your favor and you go and look back and you say wow if I would have just took 10 seconds to look at the news or if I would have took waited for the next candle um to break structure or whatever the case may be I could have had a higher chance at uh succeeding in that trade so when we're trading in the foreign exchange market, we know that we are um, basically exchanging currencies, right? The best example that I like to give is when you travel to other countries or if you've ever traveled to another country, every place does not accept the U.S. dollar. And even some places that do accept the U.S. dollar, you just rather exchange your money for that country's currency. And you may get what seems like more or what seems like less depending on where you're going, but it's just based on the current exchange rate. So if you guys have ever traveled outside of the country and you've exchanged your money, um, just drop a seven in the chat, right? Because essentially that is what we're doing, except we are only doing it digitally, right? So when over here on my watch list, um, I have several different currency pairs. And currency pairs are just two different currencies that are being traded against each other, right? So we may have the euro versus the United States dollar, um, and this is commonly known as euro USD. Um, every currency pair will have about six letters, um, and one will stand for one country, and one will stand for the second country. So GBP USD, um, that's the Great British Pound against the United States dollar. NZD USD, that's the New Zealand dollar against the United States dollar. GBP JPY is the Great British Pound against the Japanese yen, right? And let's see if I can, I think I can make this a little bigger. All right, because we need to see the full price. So the first currency is called the base currency and the second currency is called the quote currency. And the numbers that we see, which are the numbers that we typically plug in for our entry points, uh, where you're going to enter a trade into the Forex market, you can profit by either buying or selling. Um, and this is the price that you're going to be buying or selling at. That's what these numbers stand for. So for every $1 of the base currency, this is how much you're going to get of the quote currency, right? So it'll be a dollar for a dollar or five. That would be the exchange rate. For GBP USD, it'll be a dollar for a dollar 21. For NZD USD, it'll be about 60 cents for the dollar, right? So because these currency pairs are attached to actual countries and it's based on how the economy is doing, how the money is moving, when you're getting into trades, it is important that you check the news to see what's going on in the the grand scheme of things, right? Like we can just hop on a chart 
and we can get simply like directly to our technical analysis. But if the macro news or events are outweighing what the people want, right? When has the government really ever listened to the people, right? When has the macro thing really ever been about what the people want? So it's important that you make sure that you're checking the news, right? So when I'm checking the news, I like to go to forexfactory.com. Um, and this is something that you can do, I would say, depending on how in-depth you are or how in-depth you want to get, um, this could take you 10 minutes or you can be on here for 30 minutes. You could be on here for an hour, um, depending on how invested you are on finding the perfect entry. So forexfactory.com um, is pretty much just a Forex news site, um, but you can also find different types of news on here. Uh, whether it's for crypto, metals, or other assets, but we're just going to focus on Forex today. So as we just reviewed, we can see that the currency pair that the news is about will be listed, and we can see what time that news is coming out. So if we look at Monday, October 16th, 8.30 a.m., USD, and we see a red folder, this lets us know the impact of that news on that particular currency. So this news is coming out. It says Empire State Manufacturing Index, right? Now, I'm not sure what that means. So I can click on this folder here and I can actually find out what that means, right? If I'm a, a person who trades in the New York session, which is between about 8 a.m., that's pre-market, but like 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., this news may affect that first candle. Right. Because, you know, or if you don't know, the market tends to make really big moves. I've noticed at eight o'clock, 830 a.m., nine o'clock a.m., 930, 940. Um, so if we know that we have major news coming out about the United States dollar at that time. We're going to want to make sure we are getting into the market on the right side. Right. So, again, if you just click on that little folder, you could just read this. Why traders care. This is a leading indicator of economic health. Businesses react quickly to market conditions and changes in their sentiment can be an early sign, an early signal of future economic activities such as spending, hiring, and investing, right? And then it'll usually tell you actual greater than the forecast is good for currency, right? And we just can look to the side and we can see if the forecast, let's just say, for example, the forecast on September 15th was negative 9.9. .9. The actual was positive 1.9. So the actual was greater than the forecast, which means that this market probably was buying, right? So if we go back to our chart on September 15th, around 8.30 a.m., the market should have made a big move, whether it was buying or selling. Um, and we can just go check that out to to see what happened right and let me make this smaller again right so and this is all things that you this is just something that you want to do before you actually start trading right and you don't have to click every folder and open it but if you see a red folder it's high impact news it's really going to affect how that currency pair is moving for the day so you just want to make sure that you are on the right side of the market. Um, and we don't have any news coming out just yet, but if you're on the website at the right time, you'll actually see a timer. And if you're trading at that time, you can see in real time how the news is impacting the market. So uh, we're going to go back to September 15th at 8.30 a.m. If you ever, and this is a tip, guys, too, um, if you're using trading view and you want to go back to a specific point in time um you can click this calendar right here at the bottom of the chart you should have it on the free version and go back to where you want to go to so i want to go to september 15th at 8 30 a.m so that's where i'm going to go without having to scroll okay so we can see here right september 30th at 8 30 a.m the actual right like the news said was greater than the forecast which is good for currency and we can see what happened the market actually did buy 
right? So if you would have stayed in the trade for a minimum of four hours, you could have secured your 40 pips. And you guys know 40 pips is my favorite, right? So three hours and 45 minutes, 40 pips. Your TP1 would have been hit off of, and I'll even put the indicators back just so we can put everything together and see what was really going on here. All right, so we had some more uh reversal indicators. We had our market tapping into our demand zone. We can see the wick. We can see another wick. We can see a candle pattern going on here. We can see our momentum facing up. And we can see our stochastic had crossed back up, letting us know that the market will buy. So the news really aligned with what was going on in the market. But let's just say you didn't check the news you still could have come in here with your technical indicators. I'm going to just back it up here. But you could have thought the market was going to sell based on the indicators alone, right? Because if we were simply only trading technical and not including the macro of what's really going on with this currency, we would have said, okay, it's below. Oh, sorry, y'all. We would have said it's below the purple indicator. It's below the blue indicator. This is below zero because it's negative. This is below zero. These are below 50. Set a sell pending order right here. Set our TP here right below the lowest low. But as we know, this is not going to play out. This is actually going to turn out for a buy. But if you were only using your technical indicators, and you weren't actually considering the currency pair that you were trading and what is actually going on in the real world, you might end up in a bad trade. And I'm going to show you pretty much what that looks like. So we would probably sell, right? Because we're going to say, oh, this is the highest high. Everything's below. TP below the lowest low. And we're going to see whether it goes outside of the red, which would mean the trade will hit stop loss, or if it's going to go outside of the green, which would mean the trade would hit TP. And we can see stop loss would have been hit as this trade continued to buy. And you probably would have been upset and revenge traded, right? But doing that one fundamental thing, which was making sure you check the news to see what's really going on, could have changed the entire outcome of this trade, right? So that makes sense, guys. And you can see why it's important to Take the five minutes to do that. Even if it seems small, just drop a seven in the chat. Because trading is really, um, it's like a puzzle, right? And the puzzle is really not complete with all of the pieces, without all the pieces. So the very first piece that you need to understand is, what am I doing, right? What, are, what am I doing? And you're trading currencies. And currencies are literally the money that is attached to a particular country, right? And you would have to know what's going on with that country to decide if you're truly going to buy or sell. So that's that's step one, right? And I'm just breaking down everything that I've basically talked about in my other videos, but it's like I've literally been teaching since October 2020, so it's really like my teaching three-year anniversary. So I don't always go over the basics as in-depth as I used to, but I'm really a basics educator, right? So I'm just really taking it back to what are we doing here, right? And how can we convert this understanding into real dollars? Because we can, we just got to understand what we're doing. So the next thing we are going to talk about are the types of indicators we should have on every type of trade, right? And why you don't actually have to use the indicators that I'm using. If they make sense to you, cool, that's good. But if they don't make sense to you, as long as you know what you're looking for and why you'll hopefully be more profitable in your trades. So when we are deciding whether we should buy or sell, we always need some type of trend indicator on our chart, 
right? The three types of indicators that we need on our chart, if you're using indicators, because some people just use price action, you need to have a trend indicator. You need to have a momentum indicator. And you need to have a volume indicator. Because this is getting into the nitty gritty of who's in the market, right? We know what we're trading now. Who is doing this, right? And the Forex market is composed of banks, right? Banks are trading in the Forex market. Retail traders are in the Forex market. Businesses are in the Forex market because it's in their best interest, right? If you can invest your money in a place that's going to make more money, why not put it there? So we're not the only people trading. The bank could make one move and change the entire direction of the market. So when you see something like this, that's that's probably what happened, right? Sometimes the bank will literally reverse the price of the currency because it's getting too high and they cannot afford that. So when you are using your indicators, you need to know what what is the trend, right? What are most people foreseeing that this market is going to do. So Mark Douglas, if you guys have ever watched the Trading in the Zone workshop, I've showed some clips in class. He talks about how one, one trader really can change the direction of the market. However, the market only moves based on if more people have conviction that it's going to go a certain way, right? So when you see stuff like this start to happen, and I'm just zooming here. If you were in the market and you see stuff like this starts to happen, right? The market starts to stall out. And if it starts to stall out at the top, that's letting you know that price is resisting getting any higher, right? The number of people who believe that price was going to go higher, they're, they're really running out of energy because maybe the news is not going in their favor. Maybe they're starting to see that more sellers are entering the market because price is opening and closing at the same place. But once you see what people are doing, that's how you really pick up on the, the momentum, right? And the volume, like what, what is the trend? So if we look at this candle here, these two indicators are called exponential moving averages. So it's just literally telling me, okay, this was the average place that price was at for a certain amount of time over the last 50 periods, right, or trading sessions. And this was the average, the purple line was the average place of the price over the last 200 trading sessions. So if something is below average, there you go, sorry. If something is below average, especially when it comes to price, it's most likely going to continue to sell. That's why one of the confirmation questions here is, if the candles are below the EMAs, which are trend indicators, the market most likely will continue to sell. And I'll just zoom out, right? Because I like to show macro examples. Actually, I'll just put it on a higher time frame. Right? We can just look at this and see that whenever the candles are below the, and I'll just zoom out even more. We can see that whenever the candles are below the EMAs, the market tends to be on a downtrend right? Because this is telling us where most people are willing to sell, right? So if most people are willing to sell here, once the momentum starts to pick up, the market will continue to go in that direction. And it's the same thing when the candles are above the EMAs, right? These are telling us the trend. What, what do most people believe right now? That the market is going to go up or that the market is going to go down? That's why it's such a, a a good time to enter, and I'll just highlight some of these examples for y'all. It's really a good time to enter once the EMAs have, the candles have crossed above the EMAs because this is letting us know, right, based on what this candle is reflecting, more people believe that price is going to go up, right, because price has just crossed the average place for the last 50 trading sessions. That's a lot. It just crossed where price was for the last 200. That's a lot, right? So if that makes sense or is, is making sense, drop a seven in the chat. And, and it's the same thing when you're looking at it for a sell. So again, I'm just going to zoom out. 
And we can see price may have been, that's why when price starts to sell, it's really selling, right? It makes sense to, if you're coming from a scalping mindset or you're still in a mindset where you're like, I want to get money quick, I want to get money quick. You can look at, you can back test and see so many examples why it's better to hold your trades than to, to rush and make profit, right? Now, the trades that I like to recommend, they're usually about 80 pips. Sometimes I'll let the trades run, but if you've seen multiple times that the market is going to go there, you really just have to trust your analysis, especially when it comes to the news, right? Is the news aligning with what what I see going on with my technical indicators? Is the news aligning with price action as well? Are people, because price action is literally people are deciding whether to buy or sell, right? And people are reacting off of the news, right? So we can see the market was in a bit of consolidation here, right? Meaning that price wasn't really going up or down. It was staying in this range. But what happens? We see price crossed below not only the 50 trend line, but the 200 trend line. And then it continued to sell for a very long time, right? Now, this is the four-hour chart. So we, we can actually look at this and see how many um, pips this would have been if you would have just held this trade. We're going to do the short position. We're going to enter at the cross. We're going to set our stop loss at the previous high. And we could do, oh, this is already 130 pips, right? So let's just do 150 pips and 25 pip stop loss, right? So this trade, even with a 25 pip stop loss and a, Oh, that wasn't 150 pip TP, but you can see that you could have held this trade for a very long time and, and really stayed in profit. That's like, uh, it say 10 days. So if you would have held this trade for a week and another three days, because they don't include the weekends here, that would have been 198 pips, right? Some of us are already risking a dollar in our trades and some of us are already twin trading. So that could have been $400 just by holding the trade and doing your analysis. Right. So it's nice to secure small pips. Um, and I try to encourage you guys to always make sure you're securing your profits. But that's why there's a TP one, two and three. Right. So that you can have confidence that the trade is going to continue to go in that direction. Right. Even if it does retrace. Right. We can see it was selling. Right. Some of us would have got nervous here and probably took our profits out once it came back up. But then it continued to sell. Right. And then you probably would have gotten nervous because it came back up, but then it continued to sell, right? So the trend indicator here are the EMAs. Um, they do a really good job at letting you know what most people are are doing, right? And I'm not saying that you have to, to follow those people, but it's nice to know what people are doing, especially when it comes to money, because if everybody's running that way, I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to run that way too, Right? And when you see those really big candles, that's when you get into volume, how many people are running, right? Then when you check the news, you see why people are running, right? And you really just have to remember to put all of these things together and understand why you're doing them. It's not just, oh my God, trading is so boring. I have to do all these things just to, it's like, no, all these things are integral. And I always compare it to driving. When I first was learning to drive and I was reading the book, and they was like, put your seatbelt on, check your rear view mirrors, check the this mirror, back up, put your, I'm like, that's a lot. <laughs> I'll take the bus. It was a lot. So it's the same thing when it comes to trading. Now I just get in the car and everything's like second nature. Like you don't have to really stress about it because you understand why you're doing it. Yeah, I'm gonna check my mirrors because I'm not going out like that. So the more you know, the better you'll do, right? So we're not gonna talk about the uh, momentum indicator right now. We're going to talk about the stochastic because the momentum is really just telling you uh, literally the momentum of which people are buying or selling. So we're going to take that off and we're going to talk about the stochastic because the, sto the stochastic tells you a lot of stuff about price. Um, I always mention I have multiple videos on this because it's like the more you know, the better you can use this indicator because it tells us so much. Um, it does tell us volume as well 
Um, it tells us momentum. Um, it, it tells us a lot. So anytime you see any type of um line indicator like this, that's not up here with the candles, right? Any type of line indicator down here, this could be the stochastic, this could be the momentum, this could be the RSI, this can be Bill's Williams lines. Like it's so many, but the basics of these type of indicators are well, we're gonna talk about the stochastic. You'll notice that there's a upper white section, there's a lower white section, and there's a blue section. Right? So price usually will stay in a range or price will be going one particular direction. Whenever you see price crosses above this top line, oh, that is so crooked, y'all. Whenever y'all see price crosses above this top line, this is known as the 80% line, right? That lets you know there are a lot of people, right, that are buying. When price crosses above, and you'll see over here it says 80%, when price crosses above this line, it means price is overbought. It means it's getting crowded in here, right? And eventually, we're going to have to kick some people out, and we're going to have to go the other way, right? So once it's crossed up into this overbought area, right, this area is called overbought because it's, it's, it's too much going on. It has to sell eventually. Not that you should start looking for a sell right away, but you know that it's only a matter of time, right? So you can consider other factors, but the stochastic is a really good indicator to use, especially if you're somebody who wants to trade reversals as well, right? The cross up, any type of cross up or down is letting you know that a reversal is happening. So once it crosses up, you may be thinking, well, it's it's above um 50, it's higher than that, but we know price is overbought. We can see price is overbought by the stochastic, but we can also look at the candles. Right? We can see that there was a lot of buyers. We can see the body of the candle or the volume of how many buyers were there. But then on the very next candle, right? The buyers were running out of steam. How can we tell that? Look at the body of the candle compared to the previous one. So whereas we had a big push, push up here, which probably pushed the market into being overbought, the next candle was smaller, meaning that the buyers, they're, they're, they're literally thinking of it like a tug of war. They were energetic, right? They're running out of steam. It's in the overboard zone. And then the next candle we have is a strong red candle, right? So I'm pretty sure, I don't know if any... Major news came out at this time, but if we look at the indicators, we look at the candles, we look at everything together, we can see, okay, I could have seen how this was a reversal, right? We're looking at price being overbought. We're looking at the buyers running out of steam. We're looking at the next candle being a big red candle, telling us that the sellers are now in control of the market and they have the potential to push the price down. Right. So even if we did. We decided to get in on the next candle where it opened. And we set our teeth, our stop loss a little bit above the previous high. And our TP. Below the previous low. This trade definitely would have hit TP within the week. Let's see on Thursday. It's still a good 180-something pips, right, that you could have gotten off of just being able to spot that reversal and understanding what the stochastic was telling you about the price, right? If this is making sense, y'all, just drop a 7 in the chat. And again, if you joined the class a little late, we're just pretty much looking at every aspect of the chart in depth. Um, so that you can understand what you're looking at, why you're doing these things. You can make sure you're not missing any steps, right? Because it's, it's nice to be able to do it quickly, but you can only do something quickly once you have the experience and you know what you're doing, right? So that was a, a sell example. We can look at a buy example. 
right? So this is a by example, but I'm going to start from this candle here, right? So we can see that the market was consolidating, right? Meaning that it hasn't chosen a clear side. It's not really going too much higher. It's not really going too much lower. It's staying in the zone. Then we can see that structure was broken on the downside, right? So somebody probably would have thought, okay, structure was broken on the downside. If you're just trying to do this really quickly, you're just going to get in for a sell because you're only using that one piece of knowledge. Structure was broken on the downside, but you're not considering what happened next or you're not considering what's happening on the stochastic. When the stochastic is below, right, this is the 20 line, this means that price is oversold, right? It means that there were too many sellers, right, in the market, as we can see reflected from this candle. Then we can see the sellers quickly ran out of steam because look at the next candle. It's red, but it's barely any, it's barely anybody on this candle, right? Plus, we see that price was oversold. It was only a matter of time before it bought. But the candles being above the purple EMA, right now we're putting everything together. The candles being above the blue EMA, the sellers running out of steam, the market crossing back into not being overbought, oversold. Bye. Right? And within a week, let's just say if you're going to hold your trade for a week, I won't even got to hold it. Let's do how many pips we would do. We're going to do a long position. We enter where the last candle closed at. And that's the last thing I'm going to review is just opening and closing of candles as a way to enter because that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit today too. So we're going to put your stop loss at, let's say, 40 pips. And let's put your TP at 120. That's a one to three. Oh. A one to three risk to reward ratio and TP would have been hit. Right? 40 pip stop loss. And and whenever you see a candle like this, for you guys who aren't really uh hip to all the candle shapes and stuff like that, this candle right here is called a doji candle. It's a doji candle. And a doji candle has basically nobody, but it has an equal wick at the top and at the bottom. Usually when you see the doji at the bottom of a trend, it's letting you know that the sellers have run out of steam and the market's probably going to turn around. We see another doji here, right? So if you were confused and you wanted to get out here, you see another doji, you can assume price is going to continue to go up, right? And I have several videos on candles. Um, the Candlestick Trading Bible is also pinned within the chat if you want to just learn more about the candles because they really... uh. They really, they really help. So imagine knowing that, imagine understanding the news, understanding this doji means a reversal. This doji means price is continuing, right? Because it's at the bottom. A doji at the bottom means price is going up. Plus, our stochastic crosses back up. Signs for a buy, right? So these are just uh, small things that you can consider or also start to do. Um, so if you guys have any questions so far, you can drop those in the chat. If not, I'm just going to show you um, pretty much just one more candle basic thing that you can look out for that can also help you decide if the market is going to buy or sell if you're confused. All right, so we're going to continue. Um, so we're going to look at um, basically candle opening and closing highs and lows and how you can use this to help you determine your um, entry points. It's pretty simple. Um, so we talk about this a lot, but a candle, basically every single candle has four parts. It has where it opens, basically, which is where price started for that particular time period. It has where it closed. It has the highest place that it went and it has the lowest place that it went. Now, sell candles and, and the flat parts of the candle are going to be those opening and closing points, right? So a flat top on a red candle is where it opened because it opened here and price goes down. The flat bottom is the close. The top of the wick is the high. The bottom of the wick is the low. 
for a buy candle, the opening is going to be at the bottom because price started down here. Because price started down here. The close is going to be up here because this is where they push price to. The high is going to be the wick. It's very small, but the high is going to be at the top of the wick. The low is going to be at the bottom of the wick. Now, this is important when it comes to entries. Um, and I'll just give you guys one or two examples of each um, so that you can see. It's like, oh, wow, yeah, that makes sense. If I pay attention to this, it'll it'll help me. So when you're looking at a buying trend and you want to know if the trend is pretty much going to continue, this is what you want to look for. So first, we can already see price is in a demand zone, right? Meaning the market tapped into this area, so eventually it's going to buy, right? Next thing we have, we have the consolidation for a couple hours. Then we have the break of structure on the upside, right? Now, some people may still be confused because they like, well, the candles are still under the EMAs. But if we look at the very next candle, we can see that price opened higher, right? If you're looking for a buying trend, if the next candle opens higher or equal to where the previous candle closed, most likely the market is going to push up, right? But you do want to pair this with your other indicators. So in this case, let me take some of these drawings off. In this case, we can see the market was pushed up. Then we can see the very next. So if you wanted to wait to get into this trade because you like the can't, the market just made a big move. I don't really want to get in right now. You can see what the next candle does. If it opens higher than the previous candle, we can see it crossed above the EMA, right? We can see the market was still overbought. Just because it's overbought, uh, that don't mean it's going to sell immediately. Look for other signs. But we can see the market retest it, right? And then it actually went up. So looking for buys, you're just simply, and it's not going to happen every time, but when it does happen, it's nice. You want the opening, the next candle to open where the previous candle closed. And you'll see this is the same thing for sales too. So here's another example for a buy. We can see price open here, closed here. The very next candle opened higher than where price closed. The market went up a little bit. So that'll probably be like a that probably would have been like a nice uh scalping move. Right. And I'll just give you guys a sell example. Or you can probably just like literally start to look and see, like as I'm scrolling. For example, we see here price has crossed below two EMAs, letting us know more people. Have conviction that the market is going to sell than buy. Even if we feel like we missed a big move, we see the next candle open to where this previous candle closed, meaning nobody's really uh debating that. They're not debating that whether price is going to go lower. Now, the buyers, of course, are going to have some resistance, but they're only going to get it as high as the EMA because that's the average of where people could push it to, right? Here's another example. And this is the four hour. So this is probably uh, some decent pips. We can see the market was selling below the EMA, facing down, orange above the blue. This candle opened below where that candle closed. Market sold for some time. Right. So I think that's the last thing um, I really want to talk about today. If this class made sense. Drop some sevens in the chat and ask any last minute questions that you may have. All right, we can check the news for the week. We see, we don't know what's going on with that. USD has a couple red folders. We can look out for that. Okay, great, great, great. I'm glad it made sense. Uh, let's look at this on the one hour chart. Actually, I'm not looking at nothing too much right now because the market just opened, but I do encourage you guys to hop on the chart to maybe back test before take any live trades. Or if you want to just honestly hop in and get right to it, feel free. 
uh yes i'm going to upload this video um and it will be posted within 24 hours on the youtube i'm glad it was helpful the challenge for the week i honestly am not sure i'll probably use the wheel spinner to decide um oh yeah the winners from last week's challenge oh let me stop this video until next time rich friends